my gosh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Hello, bibliophiles. My name is Jill, and I am, um, I don't even, I can't even get this intro out because I just am so distracted by what's going on. So here's the thing. Olive from A Book Olive and I decided to do a book exchange. So we mailed each other three books each. They were surprises. Um, we sent little care packages with books in it. Um, mine just arrived like an hour ago and I messaged Olive and I was like, I'm gonna put makeup on <laughs> and film a live reaction to the books. Um, I just want to open them. I'm so excited. So the idea is that we will uh, read these books over the next couple of weeks and then review them. So I'm so excited and Olive said that she didn't send me any non-fiction in her little card. How cute is this little card that she sent me? A cat with glasses? That's me! Um, and she says, uh, she says, of course I, the non-fiction lover, picked exclusively fiction. Ah well. <laughs> so I can't wait to see what these books are. Um, I have a couple, I have like a couple of guesses but I'm not going to say them um, on the record in case I'm wrong. But also in the in the little gift box she sent me um, some Pittsburgh popcorn and honestly <laughs> I had to I had to film this video quickly because I was shoveling this in my mouth. I love popcorn so much. It's one of my favorite snacks. Especially like movie flavored popcorn. This is very much like movie popcorn and um, obviously I haven't been able to get movie popcorn since I can't go to the movie because everything is closed. Um, you can like Uber Eats movie popcorn, but it's not the same. But this is, <laughs> this is so, so good. Um, so I want to film this so I can start eating this popcorn again. Um, and then she also sent me some um, Pittsburgh Coffee Tree Roasters coffee. This is Mocha Java Blend. Um, and I love mocha. So I'm so excited to try this. Okay, onto the books. Look how beautifully packaged they are. She is, she, oh, there's, like, the, the paper is so beautiful. I almost don't want to open them because the paper is so beautiful, but obviously my curiosity um, sur surpasses my need to ha keep them in the paper. But, I mean, the paper is truly gorgeous. Um, okay, so let's start with the first book. Ah! This is, because so, we, all of and I have been talking this for a couple of months. Um, yeah, so I'm just so thrilled and I can't wait to see how she reacts to what I gave her, but I'm so excited to open these. Okay, let's see. This paper, it's just, it's so pretty and like so well wrapped. Mine are not wrapped <laughs> as well as these are. Okay, so this is obviously a soft cover. Let's see if I can tell from the back. You know what, let's, let's let, let's see. Jhumpa Lahiri, The Namesake. Oh, what a gorgeous book. Wow! Okay, I have never read Jhumpa Lahiri. This is a gorgeous copy of this book. I've never read Jhumpa Lahiri and wow, I'm so glad to have this copy. This is such a beautiful edition too. Look at that. I love the colors of this. Stunning. Um, this is wonderful. I actually was thinking this year I have, um, what do I have? I have the Interpreter of Maladies on my shelf from Jhumpa Lahiri and I was thinking I should read her this year because I know that, um, almost everyone who has read her loves her. Uh, so this is so great. So, I'm so glad I had to read this soon. <laughs> this is a wonderful excuse. Uh, so this is excellent. I'm so thrilled about this. Okay, look how the paper, honestly, all of you have outdone yourself with the paper. This is so fun. Okay, this is a bit of a, a bit of a heftier boy. I wonder if one of these is um, Rules of Civility, which is her favorite book. Okay, this is something I've never heard of. A Constellation of Vital Phenomena by Anthony Mara. What is this? I've never heard of this. I mean, I love this cover. Look at that. Okay, let's just see. It says, in a small rural village in Chechnya, eight-year-old Hava watches from the woods as Russian soldiers abduct her father in the middle of the night and then set fire to her home. When her lifelong neighbor Ahmed finds H Hava hiding in the forest with a strange blue suitcase, he makes a decision that will forever change their lives. Okay, I mean, yes. Set in Chechnya? Yeah, okay. I've never heard of this. What a what an interesting pick. So this looks like it's set in um the dark winter. Uh great. Thrilled. So excited about this. What an interesting pick. Okay. Thrilled. Okay. <laughs> and the last book. This paper, honestly, stunning. I need to keep this paper and do something with it because how beautiful is that? Um mine again are not nearly as stunning. This is floppy. I can feel that it. it's very floppy when I love a floppy book. Let's see. Uh, da, 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 da. No idea what it says from the back. The Patriots by Sana Krasnikov. Okay. 
what is this book? This looks like it might be another um, Russian type of book. Okay, let's see what it says. Oh no, yes, okay, I was right. <laughs> when the Great Depression hits, Florence Fain leaves Brooklyn College for a job in Moscow and the promise of love and independence. But once in Russia, she quickly becomes entangled in a country she can't escape. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. Many years later, Florence's son Julian immigrates back, immigrates back to the United States, through, though his work in the oil industry takes him on frequent visits to Moscow. When he learns that Florence's KGB file has been opened, he arranges a business trip to uncover the truth about his mother. Oh my gosh. Wow. This- okay. Does Olive not know me? These books are such good picks. I am so excited to read all of these now. Especially, I think I want to start with this one because I'm really in the mood to read like cold, dark things right now. Um, but also this one, I mean, tell me a KGB file. Yeah, I'm in. I cannot wait to read these. So I will see you back here in a second for you, but it'll probably be a couple weeks time for me. And I will review all these three books. Hello, it is check-in time. I have already read one book. I started and finished this book, which is A Constellation of Vital Phenomena by Anthony Mara. And I liked this book a lot. Um, Anthony Mara is a beautiful writer. So the story, um, which I didn't know kind of when I opened this book, obviously I hadn't read it yet. Um, it's very much actually what it says on the tin about how there's a young, like the first paragraph of this summary is very much accurate. This is set in the second Chechnyan war, which I think is like uh, 2004 to 2006, I think is the years. Don't quote me on that because this is a part of history I don't know quite enough about. I did actually do a bit of research um, just a little bit um, when I was reading this book because um, this book made me really interested in learning a bit more about the reasons behind the war because this book it's set in the war and it's a, it's about the consequences of what happened to to normal people to regular citizens uh, when there is you know a civil conflict uh, and the kind of consequences, how, the, what the fallout is for people who are not um, directly involved in the conflict or not necessarily even like care or like know what's going on or why. Like it's it's um, a really interesting kind of perspective on war in that way. The story is of course um, this man named Doka and his daughter Heva, um, their neighbor Ahmed uh, sees that Doka is being taken in the night um, taken by the rebels, I think, and they basically, which basically means he's not going to come back. And uh, the they can't find the girl, Hava, the daughter who's eight years old. And he, Ahmed, after the um, rebels have left, he goes and finds Hava in the woods with her blue suitcase, which is right here on the cover. And he decides to um, protect her in the way that he knows how. Um, he brings her the next morning to this hospital that's like. Uh, this very long, long walk away, but still in the same, like, area. And to meet this surgeon, this woman surgeon, who works at the hospital in the the town that their village is next to. And it's about how Ahmed and how Hava and the surgeon, whose name I, escapes me, Sonia, um, how their lives, both present and past, all interact. And I really like stories like that. I really enjoy stories where, um, people intersect and maybe not in like obvious ways so like maybe the characters don't ever really realize how they intersect but we the reader get to see where they overlap in their histories i really really like that i think um those are really satisfying stories to read um because i think it kind of draws to the larger thing that i believe in like all humans are connected um whether or not we know in the ways that we're connected that you know i i like those stories i find them very satisfying I liked the characters in here. I thought they were all really well developed. I read a review that said that this book was like a story told over five days. It is not told over five days. Like each chapter has a timeline in front of it and tells you like there's many years and it tells you what year it's set in. Um, so this is a story that like the immediate action takes place over five days but like it goes back like you know, 10 years in the past. Um, it even actually goes into the future a little bit, like projects in the future and tells the reader like what will happen in the future. Um, so that is that is a mis, uh, mislabeling, misdiagnosis? No, what's the word? So if you see a review that says that, that review is wrong. <laughs> it takes place over a lot of time. This book for me really excelled in a setting, in a place. Like I really um, felt, the way that, that Anthony Meyer describes 
the war zone is visceral. Like I felt really bothered by the destruction of this city and hearing people who had lived in the past about reflecting about how beautiful the city was and then how it currently looked like completely destroyed. Um, it's a really, probably one of the best descriptions of a war zone that I've ever read. Uh, I thought it was very evocative. Um, I thought the characters were all really good. I thought they were all, they all were really uh, complex and had reasons to be both likable and not likable. Um, I thought their, um, like all their actions, whether or not they were good or bad, they made sense in the way that they were described. I, I liked that a lot. Um, yeah, so I really liked this book. I think it was a great pick for me. Like I've really enjoyed, uh, like in, what I wanted from The Eighth Life, when I, when I, if you've seen my review of that book, I really wanted a sense of place of Georgia. And this book really gave me a sense of place of Chechnya, which is uh, something that uh, I loved. It really, really um, elevated this book for me. If I had a criticism, I would say there's parts where this feels a little bit overwritten, like it feels like, but also I think that's kind of why it's successful. So I don't really know if it's a fair, like if I, I necessarily agree with myself in saying this, like I do think that Anthony Namar is a gorgeous writer and I think at some points he probably took liberties with that in kind of really extending um, some of the descriptions or some of like the unnecessarily unnecessary or like not, um, super important backstory just to kind of extend his writing. Um, so it could have been a bit tighter, but honestly, like, I enjoyed it. Uh, so, <laughs> like, I don't think it's necessarily criticism. Um, I think for someone who is not from Chechnya, like, this is a pretty uh, compelling story. So I, you know, hats off to Anthony Mara for that. It is very dark. Like, this is a very, a lot of death, a lot of, like, um, you know, it's a war zone, so lots of, like, there's amputations in here, a lot of like um, graphic, gruesome violence. Uh, there is kind of um, emotional like difficulties between different characters, of course, that make, makes the story interesting. But it is, I think because of those, I just, I have a really hard time, like, I think because it is so graphic um, and so, and because, and that, it, because it's graphic, it's very successful, um, I think, I could never say it's my favorite book of all time because it is, um, it just makes me feel so like icky. Uh, and that's like a terrible way to describe a war zone because it's like, war zones are not icky, they're awful. <laughs> so um, yeah, but I think a super successful book, great pick, uh, Olive, on your part because I did really enjoy this. And this makes me very much want to pick up something else from Anthony Mara, which I think his most famous one is The Sar of Love and Techno, I believe, which I think is one of your favorite books, Olive. In short, an excellent pick and uh, a book that I would recommend if you have similar reading tastes to me, I think that you would also really enjoy this. So I have moved on to my second book, which is The Patriots by Sarah uh, Krasnik, Krasikov. Krasikov, yes, Sarah Krasikov. Um, I, again, love this cover. Um, I have just started this, or I've started it a couple days ago, I'm about a third of the way through. So I've been reading for a couple days. It's a long book, it's like over 500 pages. But I have to say, I'm loving this book. I am really, really enjoying it. Um, it is giving me, I'm gonna say this and it's gonna sound strange, but it gives me like Titanic vibes, <laughs> like the movie Titanic. And it's partially, I think, because they t the main character in here is Florence and she is traveling from the US to Russia in the thir in 1933 or 1932, like the early 30s. Um, and she's going, uh, she's leaving America to, to go to the Soviet Union. And it's partially because, at, so at this point in the book, it's because she um, has met a, a Russian who had, she had worked with in America and she is following him basically to the Soviet Union, but he doesn't know that, that she's coming for him. And uh, yeah, I'm enjoying it. It's also being told in a couple of different timelines. We're getting um, from the perspective of Flora Florence, the mother of Lenny, who he's also getting um, his perspective. So Flora is the one who goes to Russia. Lenny is, the, is her son. And we get perspectives from him as a child and then him as an adult. And that's, I think that's all the perspectives I've had so far. I suspect there might be other ones uh, going forward. Oh, I think also Lenny's son. So um, three generations we're getting in here, uh, which you know I love multi-generational family story. This is set across America and Russia and the Soviet, like Russia slash Soviet Union um, over, you know, 60 years or something. So yeah, very, I'm really liking this so far. The other thing I'm really liking about this is that I haven't read many, if any, I'm, I'm racking my brain to think of, a, of an example. I'm sure I just, 
maybe just exists, but I just can't think of it right now. But an example of a story set in the Soviet Union where people are happy. <laughs> like, I think a lot of stuff written, like, uh, in reflection is quite negative about the Soviet Union, but Florence is, like, so excited and so excited to be part of it. Um, and she feels really like she belongs there after leaving uh, the U.S. where she was, like, struggling with her family in New York and stuff and trying to feel like, trying to figure out what she was going to do with her life. And then she feels like she belongs in the Soviet Union. And I... I'm loving that perspective because I just, it's not one you see very often. So yeah, really loving this. I'll check back in uh, once I finish and see how I feel about it. But so far, uh, I, I, I was worried about this one. I was afraid this was going to be a bit of a slog, but I'm loving it. Um, having a hard time putting it down. <laughs> like I really want to read it just all the time. So yeah, I'm really, really liking this one. So I'll check back in with you once I finish this or once I start the next one. But so far, um, huge success. We are We are definitely like one and a half out of one and a half. Does that make sense? Doesn't matter. I'll see you soon. Well, hello. Much time has passed since I last spoke to you about these books. I may have mentioned in other videos that I've had some technology problems and I was editing this video and I noticed that uh, I deleted all the footage or it was corrupted or something. Basically, I didn't have any footage of me talking about the last two books um, in this video. So I'm gonna talk about them now um, to wrap it up. And honestly, I feel like it's been a couple of weeks since I've read them. So it's actually better because I have a better understanding about how I feel about them. So let's just finish off talking about The Patriots by, I think I called her Sarah. It's Sana. I'm very sorry, Sana. I'm very sorry for mispronouncing your name. It is Sana Krasikov. Anyway. This book uh, is great. I think actually of the three, it is the one that I am most likely to reread sooner rather than later. I really ended up loving Flora. Flora is the mother in this book and I felt like her, the way her story is told in here um, really gives her a lot of depth. It really gives her a really, a full scope of what a life could look like and how people's opinions and decisions affect their lives or how they change their minds over time. Um, but how, you know, decisions you've made when you were a ch like a child basically um, can affect you in ways you don't expect. This book does explore that kind of question about the living under the Soviet state, about how um, you can really do no right. And no matter what the truth is, uh, it can be skewed to mean whatever someone wants it to mean. And that is really interestingly explored in here. The part of this book I did not enjoy, um, and next time I read it, I think I would skip over these parts, is, so the, the son, what is his name again? Uh, Lenny. He goes back to Russia uh, in 2008, like that's his present day of the book. Oh, Benny just brought a toy to me to play with him. Go get it. He is working for an oil company and then there's a lot of dis a lot of discussion in here about the details of minutia of like business dealings and engineering and stuff. Like to the point of like some it's really distracting I found. It could not be more boring. In the end I did really enjoy this book and I will definitely be rereading it. Uh, I do think that there's something quite different um, something tonally really enjoyable about this book and the way it kind of marries um, an American and a Soviet sensibility and I think it's uh, yeah I really have anything quite quite like that something that kind of just sits just perfectly snugly in that kind of mid-century type of tone and I really really enjoyed it so this was obviously a great choice on all this part so thank you for sending this my way I don't know if I've ever would have heard of it or even picked it up I had never heard of it before, so I'm so glad that all of you brought that into my life. Wow, a lot of interruptions. Sorry if this um, has changed the setup. I had to go to the door and talk to my neighbor. Okay, let's talk about the last book, which is The Namesake by Jhumpa Lahiri. And this book, wow, I sat down to read it on like a Saturday morning and I didn't stop till I was done. Um, it is excellent. I just love grape soda so much. I know that I'm a fully grown adult, but Something about it, man. It really just uh, it hits the spot. This is the story of a family from Calcutta that immigrates to the U.S. and the um, husband and wife have a son. And in their culture, they get uh, a, a good name, which is their formal name that goes on documents and what they're called um, kind of in public and in school and their jobs and stuff. But they also have like a family nickname. And they are waiting for a letter to come from uh, the mother's grandmother to name their first child, their son, but the mail never comes. The nickname they give their son is Gogol, which is the last name of Nikolai Gogol. Is it Nikolai Gogol, the um, Russian author? I think it's Nikolai. 
yeah, Nikolai, <laughs> pretty sure. Um, and it was never meant to be his, uh, his good name, the name that he used um, for everyone but his family, but it ends up sticking and the child when he goes to school will not respond to anything but Gogol. And then this name kind of, it kind of shapes, it doesn't shape the rest of his life, but it definitely plays a role in how he perceives himself for the remainder of his life. So we do follow his parents a little bit, but mostly it's about Gogol and his and his journey and his life. And I, I, this book is just so readable. The writing is, it's not uh, flowery or overdone, but it is just so easy to read. It covers most of his life up until about his 40s. I found all the people who come and go in his life to be really, really interesting. Um, the ways that Gogol grows or doesn't grow, the way that he, um, feels about his family, about his mother and his father, specifically about his sister, the way he feels about his name. It's, uh, it all kind of weaves together in this beautiful kind of tapestry of this family life. I loved how their Indian culture was showcased in this book, but that it, it is this beautiful backdrop against which his childhood and his um, family life is kind of displayed and how it like rolls out. But it isn't um, the main focus of the story. Like this is very much about Gogol and his own personal experience. But it's about how all these flavors, like his his parents, uh, his parents' history and his own um, influence from his Indian culture and his his own like feelings about having traveled there as a child and his uh, experience of growing up in suburbs in uh, outside of. Um, I think it's in Massachusetts or or Connecticut. I think he grows up, um, but very much in the northeastern seaboard. And it's just, it's this absolutely fascinating um, study of how family life, family expectations, family history, and family culture kind of evolves into the next generation. And I couldn't put it down. Absolutely compelling. I was disappointed by the ending a little bit. Part of the book is that the father, hit, the reason he names his son Gogol is because his favorite author is um, Nikolai Gogol. And he wants to, and there's a story there about that. And... Um, the son rejects that for his whole life. And then I just wanted, I felt sometimes like that was kind of, uh, that relationship between the, the, the father and the namesake and the son sometimes felt a bit tenuous or a little bit, um, kind of like it would be forgotten about and then pulled back in a little bit. I mean, that's, I'm just, I'm nitpicking here because this book is excellent and, um, I think, I mean, I haven't read anything else by Jhumpa Lahiri, but I can imagine that this is a very good place to start with her, since it's where I started with her, and it is an absolute pleasure to read. Listen, let's just do a wrap up here. These three books were all winners for me. Every single one of them was great. I think the order in which I read these, which is like, I read this one first, this one second, this one third, I think I would say this is my least favorite, middle favorite, favorite, but I actually think that they're all pretty close, like I liked them all pretty um roughly the same amount i do think that this one is one that um i'm not sure if i would revisit it because it felt so heavy to me like in retrospect i think it um was quite quite heavy and dense and dark it does you know upon reflection it does give so much i know i talked this book a lot already but there's so much description about what war is like living in a war zone and i think that was um very visceral, but also I don't know if I want to read it again. But I have to say, like a true success. Well done, Olive. I liked all of these books. These two books I would not have picked up. Uh, maybe not never, but like they were not on my radar at all. This one was on my radar, but I wouldn't have prioritized it. So I am so, so glad. This was a super successful book swap. Um, thank you for the popcorn. That is long gone. <laughs> Bye bye. That was eaten the first day. This was an absolute roaring success of an experiment. Thank you so much, Olive, for agreeing to do this with me. What a great time. And these also helped me read a lot. I kind of sped through these in the beginning of February, and that was super fun because I read a lot in February, and these were a big part of it because they were so easy to read, so enjoyable. And uh, yeah, what a great time. Thank you so much for knowing my book tastes really, really well. And everyone, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Um, let me know if you've read any of these in the comments down below. Of course, I will link all this video in the description box down below, but I do hope you go watch and see how she reacted to what I picked out. I can't wait to see how she reacted to what I picked out. I have guesstimated how she will react, so I can't wait to see it. As always, thank you so much for being here and I will see you all soon. Bye.